South Africans went to the polls on Monday to elect local representatives in the country. Turnout this time fell to just 47% initial figures from the Electoral Commission showed and it seems the ANC is not claiming 50% of the total votes. Now, to give us an update of the outcome of the municipal elections, I'm now joined by Glenn Pani, who is the managing partner at Shikamo Advisory and Political Ca Campaigns. Good morning, Mr. Mpani, and thank you very much for joining us again. Good morning, Mr. Mpani. Good morning, how are you doing? And good morning to your listeners. I'm doing well, thank you. It's great to have you back. Uh, so how would you describe the mood in the country after the elections, after the voting process? The, the current mood in, in the country right now, with 92% uh, of the results counted, is announced as of 11 p.m. last night. Um, the reality is now sinking in that um, this election had very low voter turnout. That's a key point that is coming out. Secondly, another key point that is coming out is the ANC and the DA, which are the two major parties, have witnessed a regression in terms of their support base mm -hmm. as compared to 2016. The third factor that is emerging out of this election is the smaller parties they have managed to be able to gain ground in terms of support in the metros and the fourth and final point is that this election has witnessed about 52 hung parliament councils which basically means that there are going to be coalitions that are going to be run across the country in many major metros the final point is that we have witnessed about 47 independents who have won in this election compared to 1,525 who are registered. Mm -hmm. So this is the reality that is sinking in in terms of numbers and what has transpired in this election. So what would you attribute the low voter turnout to? Be, to? The low voter turnout can be attributed to a number of factors. I think the first major factor that we need to be able to look at is generally dissatisfaction in terms of the efficacy of the political system in terms of, of voters yielding results out of voting for candidates. So if your vote doesn't make a difference, the convenient method for a voter is for them not to participate. And I think that's a major issue. Secondly, it's the little excitement that the political parties have generated. Voters participate when they feel excited with uh, what they are being offered. And I think that's a major challenge that is there. Mm -hmm. The third issue that we need to be able to look at is that generally the environment has, in essence, uh, led, particularly when we look to general participation, has led to disillusionment in terms of how voters see um, a, the, their participation based on the services that have been delivered across the country. So those are the factors that one would need to be, to be able to look at. The fourth one is generally the levels of trust that voters might have on the election process to say, is it free, fair, does it uh, give them what they want? So these are a number of factors that attribute to why voters would feel despondent with, um, with participation in an election. Mm -hmm. Now, what, you, with the mention of most councils or some councils now are going to be led, led under coalitions, what does this mean for South Africa? What it basically means for South Africa is they need to be able to listen. The people have said they want them to govern within a coalition, mm -hmm. and therefore they need to be able, they need to, be able to, to operate according to what the people have requested. The people want them to govern in a coalition, and that's the reality. Coalitions are very difficult. Um, you will find that the dynamics of governing in a coalition, they are quite complex. Uh, you are confronted with the challenges in terms of who has the power, the decision-making within those councils. So it's a very difficult reality that they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the turnout of the independent candidates' result, that is surprising, isn't it? 
it's not surprising. Remember, in my earlier interview that I had with you, yeah. I mentioned the fact that the concept of independent candidates is very flawed mm. on a number of levels. One, the idea of an independent candidate in terms of voters and their attitudes towards independence. Voters are used to identifying two political parties. Mm -hmm. Independent candidates, they rarely make any traction and there is evidence across the continent. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the other factor is on accountability. Who are they accountable to? So this was an experiment that was likely not to go anywhere. Because if you've got 1,525 independents who ran, and you end up with about 47 independents, the reality is it has not worked. It, has, it is flawed. Mm -hmm. What you are trying to cure within political parties cannot be resolved effectively by having independents. Because the major problem is political parties need to be accountable. Political parties need to be responsible. You need to fix that. You don't fix that by creating one individual who is the center of power. Mm -hmm. Now, by 4.30 a.m., ANC clinched 153 councils, while the DA clinched 23 councils. But EFF had no councils. Yes, the EFF, is, from, from the way I'm reading them, so the issue of councils is where a political party focuses on targeting certain words for them to be able to win them. Mm -hmm. My understanding in assessing the EFF strategy is they are in a growing mode where they are growing the numbers. Because remember, the electoral system here is we have got the first past the poll and the PR system combined in the local government election. So you find that the, a party might have numbers of seats and then it might have percentages in terms of PR. Mm -hmm. So my sense is the EFF is... He has stretched itself across the country, and they are interested in getting numbers. And I also don't even think, in my view, they are in that position where they want to have full control of the councils. I think their idea is we'll continue to play an oversight role and we'll hold these councils accountable. That's how I'm looking at their strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Mpani, at the SABC reported a discovery of three ballot um, boxes containing marked ballot papers in Mamaledi West on Tuesday evening. What is the latest on this? The latest on it, I think um, they are, I think they have resolved the matter. And one of the things about the IEC here in uh, South Africa is that they have an effective process of dispute resolution. Uh, they have got a liaison committee of different political parties of resolving it. Mm -hmm. And so my sense is they have found a solution to deal with it, either cordoning those ballot boxes so that they are not part and parcel of what they are counting. So they have effectively dealt with it. Mm -hmm. What is your overall impression of the provisional results? My overall impression of the provisional results is that they have, in essence, reflected the following that the voter is despondent and disillusioned in terms of um the current political system you can't have a third of the population making a decision on two-thirds of the population i don't think that would happen in a normal democratic country mm. there is need for the electoral commission and all the stakeholders to really rethink before the next, next national election what is the voter communicating to them. The third issue that is also important is for the major party, the ANC and the DA, they need to really sit down and ask themselves why have they lost over a million voters mm -hmm. within their ranks? What is it about their leadership? What is it about their policies that has caused them to regress? The advice that I would give to political parties like the EFF and other small political parties is they need to go back to the drawing board and ask themselves how can they multiply bountifully within the respective areas that they have been contesting. Mm -hmm. So that is the critical message that comes out of this election. Mm -hmm. Do you think that perhaps the limited time or the reduced time to campaign could have been a factor to the way the results turned out? The reality on voting is that voters know who they want to vote for before, way before an election has taken place. So if you look at the, the results, you can tell that the, particularly the support base for the ANC did not turn, up, turn out in this election. 
And this is a major factor. So even if you have given them four, five, six months, it wasn't going to change much because the voter would have already made a decision. Mm -hmm. The other advice that I would look at is, is there a problem in separating local government election and parliamentary elections? Maybe South Africa needs to consider a reform of the system where they hold local government elections and parliamentary elections jointly. That way, since parliamentary elections generally attract a large number of voters, it might actually help in terms of curing turnout. That might also be a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mpani, we really appreciate you making time to speak to us again this week. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that was Glenn Pani, who is the managing partner of Shikamo Advisory and Political Campaigns. And he was just giving us an update of the local government elections and elections that are currently ongoing in South Africa. We'll be back with the next interview shortly. Stay tuned.